Welcome back, everyone. So excited to have our guest on today, Casey Park, who is a sales executive with Sway, and he's also the current president of the Oklahoma um, Athletic Trainers Association. Casey, so great to, to have you on here and great to see you again since we last connected in Indianapolis. How's everything going? Uh, it's going really well. Um, it's kind of the slowing down of the year but at the same time the preparing of the next year so it's a lot like the traditional athletic training roller coaster absolutely and you know i just i admire how much uh involvement you know when, when it comes to everything that you're doing over the course of the year not just with sway but also your personal growth uh initiatives your involvement with the oklahoma athletic trainers association and that's why i wanted to have you on today because i just i wanted to, t to talk about just the that passion for personal growth, that passion for building relationships and, and networking with others. And, you know, first and foremost, where does that passion come from? You know, what, what kind of stemmed that passion to support the career development of athletic trainers? I think the, the passion for supporting the career development for athletic trainers kind of stems from like my mentors, uh, the mm -hmm. people that like I've grown around, they've helped me to, uh, push my own boundaries of you know, creating creating a job or reaching out to someone and running for a leadership position or um, you know meeting and speaking with future professionals in the in athletic training is something that is a way to kind of give back and help them realize that you know they they can take on these challenges just as well they might be kind of scary they were scary for all of us and um, you know, I really appreciate the opportunities that I get to speak to students and meet young professionals and, and be at the table with uh, other leaders in, in meetings and, and get to use like my network and uh, my experiences and, and just help them kind of understand that the profession of athletic training is a, if you love the profession of athletic training, it'll love you back, but you've got to be involved. Absolutely. And, you know, when it comes to, to involvement, you know, your, your involvement with Sway as, you know, with your role there, it, it meshes really well with being a resource to build communities uh, for clinicians, not just athletic trainers, but other healthcare clinicians as well too. Um, but, but Sway itself is a company that's spread out. You've got team members all over the place. Uh, before we talk about the, the building bridges aspect later, what are some strategies that you use as a company and, you know, talking to the audience here of, of healthcare, wellness, sports, um, and, uh, and fitness professionals in a variety of positions, what are some strategies your company uses to help stay together on a unified front when you're all spread out, when you're all working remotely? How do they all stay connected? And what are your suggestions for ensuring that unified delivery of that shared vision and that shared service excellence that Sway delivers? Yeah, that's a... That's a great question and a good uh, kind of pinpoint of the challenge of running a business virtually, right? And, mm -hmm. and being in remote settings and not in an office. Um, Sway does, but most of our uh, team members are, we have a few here based in Tulsa where our headquarters is. Um, we have people in Texas and Iowa and New York. And we actually have a team member that um, lives in, I think, the Philippines. So he's like on the other side of the globe. Um, and and our leadership team has done a really, really good job of, of bringing a sense of, of community and togetherness over, you know, things that we do is we have uh, starting at a really high level. We have an annual meeting where we bring, try and bring everybody together that we can in person at least once, maybe even twice a year. And that could be around a holiday time or it can be in, a, in an off season time for us um, so that you get to kind of put faces with names and just get to be around each other. We just had a meeting here in, in Tulsa not too long ago. And, you know, day one was just like there, no work is going to be done today. It's going to be icebreakers create a walk-up song for yourself let's do a get to know each other by the kind of music that you like and you have to guess and tell us something new that you're working on as a, and as an individual and you know uh we, we try and do that in person then we go out and do what typical people do in person you know let's go to something like top golf or let's go do an activity let's go eat you know schedule that stuff around let's, let's go to a soccer game or go to a baseball game or what's you know normal for your area and, and get involved in that. Um, we do monthly virtual staff meetings um, 
and all the team members are present and they get to speak on what's updated in their roles and the big ones that they've had for the company. If it's marketing, if it's the development team, if it's the, um, you know, uh, customer support team, the customer success team, the billing team, you know, what challenges we're facing and everybody can kind of get on the same page because when a smaller organization, you kind of all have to wear multiple hats and understand what each other's doing a lot like an athletic trainer and a sports medicine team. And you need to be able to know who gets referred to what and how everybody takes care of what's going on. Um, you know, we, in those monthly meetings, we always celebrate birthdays and we always celebrate like work anniversaries. We call work anniversaries, the work anniversaries. Um, you know, and, and the first slide is always, you know, the, here's the mission. So everybody remembers this is the mission and vision of, of our company and what our goals are. And we all need to be pulling on the same rope and we all need to be able to, you know, hopefully tell someone if you ever meet anybody, what Sway is and what it does so that we all have this unified understanding and communication of, of the product and the company. Um, you know, it's, we have weekly smaller meetings with smaller groups, right? So like my sales team meeting, we meet every uh, Monday morning and then we cross that over with like our customer uh, experience team because that's kind of how our world works when we close a deal in sales we hand that off and we need to make sure that that communication is really strong and hey are we doing everything that we can do to be, make your team successful can you guys help us do this so that we make our team successful because customer support customer uh, I would say what's, you know, taking care of our customers is very important to us, right? Just like it is anyone else. So yeah. communication is very important there. Um, but yeah, personal wins, engagements, births of kids. We actually created a, um, a lot of people use Slack. I don't know if a lot of people no. do use Slack, but we use Slack. So we created a, a This Is Us channel um, because some of our team members were like, all your kids are growing up and that we haven't seen them. And you know, they might not be friends on social media. So like, that's where we put in pictures of what's going on in our world and, and keeping everybody up. So that really helps us out with our team member that's on the other side of the globe is mm -hmm. he's, he's not left out and on an Island. So yeah, it's kind of a high level look at that, at that. All right. So first and foremost, before we break into a couple of those key points, what's your walk up song, Casey? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think mine was regulators by Warren G. And oh, <laughs> You know, so I, I, I could go a bunch of different directions, but I think that was the direction that I went. Um, and uh, yeah, so that that was that was mine. And I, I didn't have a good poker face because as soon as the song came on, I started like, you know, singing it almost. <laughs> and I didn't hold that close to the chest. And somebody was like, oh, oh it must be Casey. Oh, I love it. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, mine would be, there's a song called Let's Do This by The Outskirts. It just like, every time I hear it, it just like gets me ready to go. Um, so that, that would be mine. But um, you, you mentioned a couple things. Number one, you talked about highlighting outside of work who you are as people and that special page on Slack that you developed, um, just the, the birthday affirmations, the you know the celebration of special life events. When you're in one office, it's kind of easier to do that because everybody, you, hey, we got cake today because it's a birthday. But like when you're doing it remotely, it's harder to do that. So it's great that, that you have found ways to still celebrate that and let people know that they're more than just their job. Um, and, and you collaborate. And I also love how you talked about, you know, in every meeting, you kind of come back to what is that vision and you tie what you're doing back to that vision. But then you're also, it's not just reporting out on your own, not just reporting out on your own responsibilities, but also tying in your stuff and, and how it works interdependently with the other teams and you collaborate and solve problems together. So um, kudos to you for, for your team setting up that kind of system to, to make sure because it's important, as you said, that service excellence that needs to be consistent, that customer service needs to be consistent for those people that purchase Sway and that utilize it. But then more importantly, for your team to all be accountable and feel a part of something unified being spread out across the globe and across the United States. So great job, great job with that. And you mentioned technology. 
the, the concept of Sway is, is really great and it helps bring healthcare teams together in that delivery of patient care. In what ways, kind of go into that, in what ways does the Sway platform help healthcare professionals communicate and collaborate effectively in terms of not just patient care, but also prevention and, and education? Yeah, so a great question. Um, I've always said that Sway removes any geographical borders that there might be to gathering data and communicating mm -hmm. across the sports medicine team or any kind of medical um, organization. And in our backgrounds as athletic trainers, our goal was always to, you know, create your sports medicine team and you need to have your team orthopedists. And then you need to have all these other medical professionals, you know, maybe some physical therapists that can help you out. There might be a chiropractor on your team. There could be a team dentist and a team optometrist. And then it goes next levels above that, you know, or the oral surgeon and an ophthalmologist and neuropsychologist. So in Sway, the way the platform is built is that an athletic trainer or a clinician can have, um, could share access to that data that's, you know, it's HIPAA and FERPA secure, and it's not just open to parents or coaches or the athletes that can log in and see all this data that's going on and, and have access to, EM, you know, uh, PHI. So if, if I'm an athletic trainer at a high school, I can reach out to my team doctor. If I'm on the sidelines and I'm solo that night and I'm evaluating an athlete, and I have this kind of on the fence moment about, you know, I'm doing my clinical evaluation, just like I've always been trained and I'm always done. And if, if I feel like, Hey, you know, they, I don't know if they have a concussion per se or something's kind of going on. I can call my team doctor who might not be on the sidelines with me and say, Hey, can you log into your sway app or just open it up real quick, find this athlete and look at that data and give me your feedback on that situation on what you think we should do next moving forward based on, my clinical evaluations, just like I'm going to tell you, that I same times do with orthopedic evaluations. And now I have data to kind of go with these kind of invisible injuries as concussions are always pretty much usually described as. Um, and then moving through the, the next level of care, right? And if you're going to refer that to that next level provider, like a vestibular therapist, that vestibular therapist can see the same data and those same test results, even if they're not the tests that were administered in their clinical setting. So you bring everybody together and they're all seeing the same information on the one student athlete profile and you're not comparing, well, I did a test in the clinical setting on this athlete and, but his baseline test and data is living over here. You know, we right. can pull everybody together. And kind of earlier we were talking about um, how the PBR professional bull riders and Justin sports medicine and the Canadian rodeo team all use sway together. And, and it's important that they all do and have access to each other's systems when needed, because if that rodeo cowboy performs at a, at an event in Calgary, Alberta, at the Calgary stampede and maybe suffers an injury, but his baseline lives in the PBR where they, where he did his baseline assessment, that athletic trainer and the Canadian can log in to the PBR, do that post-injury test there, and, and we're all on the same page from the from the doctors, athletic trainers, PTs. And then you get into return to learn. So your your school counselors um, can get access to that if 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 you deem that necessary. And and it just makes sure that everybody's on the same page as far as like which direction are we going or running it into any, you know. Um, roadblocks, what accommodations need to be made in a classroom. Um, mm -hmm. So communicating with the counselors, with the teachers, with the principals to follow policies within school districts and universities and things like that. And that builds confidence, that experience, I'm sure, builds confidence in the patient or the one going through that, thinking, wow, no matter where I go, it's consistent. It's not he said this and he said that and she said this and she said that. It's consistent. And then you have that data. You have those those besides the um, the uh, the subjective information that we gather as clinicians, you have that objective data as well to go along with it. And it's just it's a powerful thing, especially when it comes to head injuries where we want to be consistent and we want to be appropriate with with the way we monitor it and guide those. So um, just the fact that everyone can get access to that same system and 
uh, it's sometimes hard to communicate, to hop on the phone with someone or to have a time to get in touch with someone before they're seen by another clinician, but having access to that in real time, that's a game changer with, um, with being helpful to help that person re return appropriately based on the, at whatever level. And especially if it's more of those complex cases that are lingering, then, you know, it helps people look at the big picture and think, all right, what are we missing here? Um, this is stuff is this, this data is not changing, you know, uh, these balance metrics are not changing or these, uh, uh, these neurological testing metrics are not changing. How do we address this? And it just allows that team approach to healthcare, which I feel is so crucial as healthcare providers, we need to always have that team built around us and those other resources that we may need to call on when we have those specialty cases or just areas outside of our own expertise. And it's great that Sway's helping to build that relationship and build those bridges. Yeah, correct. And parent involvement is, is very important to communicate with them, especially when I was a child or a minor. Um, and however far your network needs to be, we know athletic trainers are trying to get into rural settings and that's where there's a big mm -hmm. need. But the challenge with being in rural settings is the accessibility to that next level provider. So yeah, we, we can bring together people who might be multiple time zones away, but mm -hmm. they are the specialists. So I can have them reach out to, you know, Dr. Kays with, uh, his Institute up in Omaha and be like, Hey doc, I need you to check out this kid in California. And he's like, yeah, sure. Let's just let's set it up. Yeah. No geographical borders. You know, there's no, not with today's technology. You got to harness it or you're, you're missing the boat. Absolutely agree. Let's make a little, uh, change direction here with that conversation because we talked about building bridges. We talk about how that software brings clinicians together. You're very passionate about networking and building bridges across all healthcare platforms, um, just from a personal and professional level. And, you know, in your role as president of, of OATA, let's discuss networking strategies for healthcare professionals. So what are your suggestions on how, when you're going to events or when you are meeting new people that potentially could be a part of your circle that you could be um, collaboratively working with, how do you build those relationships? How do you engage in that in, in a way that is um, productive in building those relationships? Right. Now you're speaking my love language. Uh, <laughs> <That's> networking, <right. laughs> ne networking is something that, that I love. Um, I, you know, some people are good at it. And I think, think some people are naturally good at it. And I think some other ones are kind of scared of it and shy and, and need to build it. So like what, what I always recommend to people is kind of starts out with what my dad used to tell me. I was not an outgoing person growing up. I was really shy. And my dad always told me, he said, if you'll just smile and say hi, mm -hmm. those two steps and, and then go from there, you know, people are naturally going to have a kind of this wall built up and, and maybe don't want to talk to somebody new. And in my world, I've, I've always told people, I said, if you will um, start out by just asking someone, hey, what's your name and where are you from? And, and depending on where you're at in that location at that point in time, that can be your first step. So if I'm in, if I'm in Texas at a conference and I meet somebody new, I'm probably going to ask them, like, are you from Texas originally? And they may say yes, or they're going to say no. And if they say yes, well, what part of Texas are you from? And I've also learned that if you know the mascot of their hometown, those individual, those, those invisible walls, like they just come down and people are shocked and surprised that you know this information. <laughs> and that's always kind of been a fun geography, geography, like challenge for myself. Um, and, and it's all about just trying to, build a connection, right? We all know that in the world of, of athletic training specifically, that it's a small world and that everybody knows everybody. You just got to figure out how you know each other or who you know that knows someone or, and I usually go with, okay, or, you know, in, in the athletic training world, where did you go to school? Right? Because there's only so many education programs out there. And I'm sure that we know somebody who went to school there, or you did your, if you're old school and you did your bachelor's degree, and then you did your graduate assistant position somewhere else, those, those lines cross a lot. It's, it's not 
a tree it's more of a of a web so i always ask those questions and, and then just kind of let the conversation go from there i usually tell students like my trick is or, or my strategy is ask those questions and then shut up stop talking and let them talk and they're going to just continue to talk and they'll probably just open up and then you'll find something to talk about and you'll meet you'll know somebody that knows somebody and you, you, the stories will start to kind of flow and, you know, ask them questions like, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? That's always kind of just a fun because mm-hmm. uh, everybody's always trying to improve themselves. But for me, those those were the things that I've always learned started out um, of, of building relationships and, oh, I know this person. We went to school together or, hey, did you know that he and I, oh, well, you're from Arkansas. So you know do you know this guy who's at that university and did you go to school there or no i'm originally from here oh okay well when were you there because if you know when somebody was there they might know somebody who was there and they recognize a name and then it just kind of becomes a well let me tell you a story about this person and then oh my gosh i can't believe you know and then you kind of start cracking jokes and you know uh it, it just becomes a fun conversation right and and then when i'm in when i'm in a exhibit hall we know that there's there's certain times when it's uh the the participants the athletic trainers who are there at the conference they kind of have that time at window where they get to come in and and you you try and talk to them you're trying to get to know them and you have very short time to have those conversations um and then they have to go to the next session for their ceus so in the exhibit hall the other people who are there exhibiting as well are people you need to get to know right and they might be somebody at um, a healthcare provider right it could be for example in in georgia it was children's hospital of atlanta right and then me and then right next to me is my buddy eric who's with medco right Mm -hmm. And, and we're all kind of we're in the same circles and we all know the same people but we also don't know who we don't know and it's good to meet them and talk to them and, and ask them questions and get to know them and not compete with them, but try and find ways to collaborate, right? Like yeah. how can we help each other grow our businesses? How can I support you with, you know, helping you be a better leader and helping you take care of your team, your athletic trainers that work for you. We all know that this is kind of a, a volatile, uh, high turnover profession the athletic mm-hmm. training world is right now. Um, so we all know that retainment of, of quality workforce is important. So like if, if our tool can help you make your athletic trainers happy or keep them happy, they're probably not going to leave your company and it's going to make your job harder. You know, you're selling that kind of downstream effect of this is why we should partner together. And you, you really hit the nail on the head where, the most important thing is finding common ground when you're entering into a conversation, especially with someone that you've either never met before or that you are, you've met briefly, but haven't had a chance to get to know. And it it truly shines when you are someone who shows and demonstrates you are authentically interested in the other person. Um, It's very easy to tell when that's authentic. And, And that's just my advice to echo what you were talking about is, truly do demonstrate effort and have a sincere um, desire to get to know those people that you're coming in contact with because we can learn something from everyone we meet. And it's also very exciting when you ask those questions and kind of discover those common grounds, whether it be where you went to school, who you know, what your passions are, what your challenges. We also bond very deeply over when we have shared challenges and shared problems, mm-hmm. like the staffing challenges that that you um, talked about that are evident in athletic training and healthcare across the board. And you know, when you have common ground with that, well, then you're sharing pain points with one another. And then after you kind of vent about that and you acknowledge each other's challenges with it, well, then that opens the door for saying, maybe we could work together to try and figure out a solution because multiple brains are better than one and I'm feeling stuck. So what advice do you have for me? Um, Building that other person up as a resource who could help you, but then also offering yourself as a resource to help them with no 
requirement of anything in return, like just because you want to help. I found that really makes a difference with building those bridges and having relationships with people. And you may not get to that in the first 30 seconds of a conversation, but the key is, is having enough conversation where that person you're talking to feels that you're genuinely interested in them as a person versus a transaction. And that's something I know absolutely just in interacting with you over the years and, and, and seeing, you know, spend some time with you in Indianapolis, that is authentically you, you care about the people that you come into contact with. And that's, that's evident and that's fantastic. And that's why you're able to help bring people together, um, whether it's related this way or not, you know, you, you build those bridges and, and connect other people. And that's something that, that should be commended because it's not always easy for people. So, um, you know, that's, we have to build bridges regardless of our profession because it just helps us all rise better. Correct. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's something that I figured out I was good at and I don't want to keep it uh, to myself. So if mm -hmm. I can't help someone, I'll find somebody that can, you know, and like in the movie, big daddy, he says, you know, initiating the conversation is half the battle. Once you get <laughs> past that, the rest of it is easy to do. That's right. That's right. Well, um, one last, uh, before we, we talk about a call to action, I just want to, um, you, you know, remind everyone listening, your contact information is in the show notes, uh, in the episode description below. If you want to connect with Casey, you can absolutely find him on LinkedIn on Instagram. He's at Casey dot Paulk. It's P A U L K. And then on Twitter X, it is at Casey Polk ATC, just all one one word, no dots there. Um, but uh, that's how they can find you, Casey. And I just kind of one last key commitment to action and call to action. If someone is new at a location in a job, and let's say it's a, a healthcare provider who doesn't really, they move to a new area or they don't really know the resources around them yet, what is your biggest advice for someone to start building those bridges? into the community of stakeholders and other healthcare professionals or other resources that they may need to call on at a, at a time of need. And I would say the first steps that, that I've taken in, in my career in that world is, is reach out to start with your maybe direct supervisor and, and other people who you have seen in that area that are our leaders in in that industry and maybe someone who's a little bit older than you or maybe has a few more years of experience um it, somebody that it, let's say a, in a sports world it, the first game that you're going to play against you've got to walk across that field and you've got to go make an introduction or ask mm -hmm. something like is there an athletic trainer here i think utilize technology right i mean like atlas has been a huge um bridge itself for data so you know go out and find that information and then reach out to that person ahead of time saying hey i know you're coming to our our uh, sidelines our, our uh, stadium our location for this game um and, and then just start asking questions like you know hey i'm new uh, who's your team doctor or or, or there's social media. I see that all the time where somebody jumps into like a, 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 you know, secondary schools, athletic trainers, Facebook page and says, Hey, I'm new to this area. Is there anybody else from around here? Who is your team doctor? You know, um, and, and leverage the, the, the state association. That's our job mm -hmm. is to make it easy for someone who's new to our state or new to our area to get off on the right foot. Right. Um, and again, if you're new or let's say you're a young professional coming into the profession, your preceptors, your program directors, your clinical coordinators, you know, maybe those uh, people who you did your rotation with, uh, you know, they probably have a connection in there and, and they have a wealth of knowledge and they have a really large network. And if you just, you know, leverage that don't be afraid to reach back out to those those people who got you to where you're at and then say like who who would you recommend i reach out to in this because everybody's kind of connected if those people are in a leadership role uh, man i'm telling you like 
that has been the coolest thing is, is in these leadership roles, meeting people who are in committees and they know somebody in Pennsylvania and you're from Oklahoma and you meet Larry Cooper, who's in like Western PA. And then they meet Bart Peterson, who's in Tucson, Arizona. And then you meet people like, um, Kai Kugler who's in, who's in California. And then you meet Amy uh, Fraley hand who's in South Carolina. And, and it's like all these, it's like this cool web of people, but you've got to, initiate that conversation just like i said earlier and and if you don't know you're never going to know and if you don't ask the answer is always no right closed mouth never gets fed whatever however you want to say that statement but you've got to take a deep breath and just initiate the conversation that's half the battle Awesome. Well said, my friend. Again, for everyone listening, make sure you can connect with, with Casey on your preferred platform. Casey's a fantastic resource. Thank you so much for, for taking some time to be on the Catalyzing podcast to share your, your insights pertaining to building bridges and, the, and the, your approach to, to helping people grow their careers and their practice clinically. Um, everyone listening, make sure that you, if you haven't yet, uh, subscribe to catch all the future episodes of the Catalyzing Podcast. We truly appreciate your time to listen. Continue to do the great things you're doing. Casey, keep doing those amazing things that you're doing, and we will catch you all next time. Thank you, Casey. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it.